sometimes I build cool things out of junk and other times I restore things that have already become junk. And for today's video, you're gonna see 13 things that I've fully restored over the past several years. Each of these has its own full length video if you're interested in seeing them in greater detail. There's a link to my restoration playlist in the video description. Restoration work can be the most difficult and yet the most rewarding. Seeing an object the way that it looked when it was first made, often before I was even born, and knowing that I had a part in its restoration, why well, that can be extremely rewarding. And this first item is a perfect example. Here's a desk from my childhood. I actually remember doing homework on it, probably while watching reruns of Gilligan's Island and Get Smart. This was literally falling apart. I had to completely dismantle it in order to do a proper restoration. Underneath the beat up and marred surface was beautiful quarter sawn oak and amazing grain patterns. Using a proper stain color to enhance the beauty of wood is important. Here I'm using a dark walnut stain by Minwax. The end result is amazing and probably the best furniture restoration I've ever done. A friend of mine gave me this part from an old piano stool. At first, we weren't even sure what it was. The musical symbols in the metal legs served as a clue. A wire brush with a beeswax oil mixture did a great job cleaning and shining the three legs. Since the rest of this was missing and I couldn't find a picture of what it originally looked like, I had to improvise and design what I thought would look good. Many hours and much thought went into this restoration, but the end result was worth it. The asbestos sad iron dates back to the early 1900s. They are very common. The core or flat iron was heated on a stove. The design really did use asbestos. It was under the handle, inside the hood or cover. Asbestos was used to insulate or keep the iron hotter for longer. This hood locked onto the core so it could be lifted and used to iron your clothes. This is a tea cart. Well, was a tea cart. The wheels were all broken. So I was very excited when I found a donor tea cart at an estate sale. Even smaller restorations like this are a lot of work. 80% of the restoration is in the sanding and preparation of the wood in order to get it to look good. This particular restoration was going to be a surprise for the family who gave it away but had no idea they were gonna get it back fully restored. <gasps> oh my gosh, that is beautiful. <laughs> Here's a wrought iron bench that was outside for 10 years. Every stick of wood needed to be replaced and the metal cleaned using a wire wheel on a drill. The rust was treated, then it was primed and painted. I used treated lumber, which I stained and then applied several coats of a spar varnish. It's been on my porch for over a year and it still looks just like it did the day I finished it. Here's a small table that somebody wanted me to fix for them. They didn't want a perfect restoration. Basically just cleaned up and painted. This is what I call when a bad restoration is good enough. Not that this is a bad job, but what I mean by that is sometimes furniture can look good by just sanding it down and giving it a good paint job. A simple restoration. A lot of people even use chalk paint on furniture to give the piece an old but classic look. It seems that I don't often find projects, but they find me. I didn't go out to an estate sale looking for an old birdbath, but here's what I came home with. 
Some things just appeal to me for whatever reason, and I just go with it. Sometimes I like the challenge, and other times I appreciate the beauty under the beat up textures. This is a similar process as the bench. Remove all the old paint, treat the rust, prime, then repaint. This was my first attempt at replacing wicker on a chair. I've always wanted to try it. So when someone asked me if I could fix this chair, I said, sure, even though, well, I wasn't sure, <laughs> but I knew I could figure it out. For more details on this process, you can watch the whole video. Just click the playlist in this video description. This is not just an antique wall-mounted coffee grinder, but before I got it, somebody tried to wire it as an electric light. How cool is that? Of course, that's the way that I was going to restore it as well. Old hammers are very easy to find. In fact, you probably have a couple in your house right now. I could have replaced this handle using a store-bought replacement, but I thought it would be a lot more fun and challenging to make one out of a piece of scrap oak. This was another estate sale find. I think I paid five bucks for it. This too had to be completely disassembled and sanded down before I gave it a smooth, shiny, French polish finish. This toddler bench restoration was very similar to the full-size bench you saw earlier. I replaced all the wood, cleaned the metal, and gave it a rust treatment. Then a cool kitty paint job, and this is better than new. This is a nice, sturdy, banker-style chair from the late 30s, early 40s. It turned out to be a lot more work than I anticipated. Very tedious sanding, and I found that the birch wood was rather difficult to get a nice, even stain. But in the end, I was very pleased. Now those are my last 13 restoration projects, but they're not going to be my last 13 restoration projects, if you know what I mean. Thanks for watching Alley Picked. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Alley Picked, and until next time, 
I'll meet you in the alley.